uh, from Raytown, Missouri, and they were going to begin to do a devotional uh, with their members from this book. Uh, I wrote Fear Free Living, uh, well, it's been a number of years ago now, but this was from a series of messages that I taught uh, back in 2001, uh, entitled Fear Free Living. Uh, actually, I guess I would have uh, uh, begun to teach on that uh, probably December of 2001 and over into 2002. And uh, ultimately, it was uh, in response to the fear that was going on in the world after the 9-11 the terrorist attacks. And my family and I were in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Uh, we had went there for Christmas. And uh, in the hotel, the Lord began to talk to me about attacking fear. And I had brought, brought along a, copies, a copy of the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine. And in it, Brother Copeland was talking about dealing with fear. And if I remember correctly, he was talking about declaring war on fear. And uh, I began to uh, look at this subject from the Word of God. And uh, so we want to deal with this. Uh, according to the word's perspective. And I'm not just dealing with this because of the, the issue, the, the uh, uh, things that the world is dealing with right now in terms of, of uh, COVID and things of this nature. This is something that you've got to take even beyond this season and understand that you cannot allow fear in your life in any area. All right? Because anything birthed in fear ends in failure. And when you start fearing it, it opens you up to the enemy's attack. Now, we're going to begin here uh, in chapter 6. Freedom from fear in every area of your life. And again, we're not going to go uh, paragraph by paragraph. I'm choosing parts of the book to teach out of. And uh, I want you to go ahead and get the free PDF download. Uh, and, and, and study it, have devotionals with your family, make it part of your morning routine. And uh, the Bible describes uh, the true story of a man named Job. And you know that story in the Old Testament. Uh, specifically, Job chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 8, and I'll paraphrase this. It says that Job lived in the land of Uz. He was perfect and upright. He feared God and eschewed evil or, or stayed away from evil. He separated himself from evil. He avoided evil. All right. Now notice that's important because Job avoided evil. He stayed away from it. And the emphasis here is that Job was a godly man. Because he feared God and separated himself from evil. And Job 1.3 describes Job as a very wealthy man. In that he possessed 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 uh, she donkeys. And a very great household. And the Bible says he was the greatest man in the east. Alright? Uh, for those of you that are watching from... The Kansas location, uh, that means that to have enough land to take care of all these animals, that Job would have had to have a, if we want to call it a ranch, that would reach from DeSoto to downtown Olathe. Or if you're watching here from Little Rock, uh, from right here at 10500 Markham where we're filming, to the city limits of... Uh, uh, I had the, the city on my mind, uh, just down road, Toad Suck, uh, Conway, Arkansas. All right, so from here to uh, the city limits of Conway. It was huge. Uh, Reverend Tony Cook uh, states that uh, Job was probably an importer and an exporter. He had camels that would, that would uh, provide caravans. And the important thing to see here is that he was blessed and very wealthy. Hallelujah. And as the story continues, and you'll remember, Job lost everything. And there was even an attack on his health. 
and he consequently lost that abundant lifestyle. But let's investigate why this could have happened to this godly man. All through chapter 1 and 2, you see the tragedy that befalls Job. Uh, People stole his livestock. The house that all of his sons and daughters were in caved in, killed them all. And in chapter 3, we see where Job was feeling sorry for himself. More importantly, in Job 3.25, Job says the following, The thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. The original Hebrew says, I feared a fear, and it came upon me. So it was a very specific fear that Job had that happened to him. If, if you want to explain it, look carefully at his actions. Job 1, 4, and 5. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so that when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them, rose up early in the morning, offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. So Job's problem was that he was afraid that his sons may have sinned and cursed God. And as a precaution, he offered sacrifices for his children. But the important point here is that Job offered these sacrifices out of fear. He did so out of fear. All right? And in doing that, he opened himself up because anything you do out of fear will end in failure because fear causes you to become a target for the devil. You can do the right thing But when you do it out of fear, you receive no blessing because you're doing the right thing for the wrong reason. Whenever you're here, whatever you're fearing will eventually happen to you. For example, if a person uh, feels pain in their body, a chest pain or something of that nature, and you begin to fear you have a heart problem, you'll eventually be rewarded with the very thing you fear. It's so important because if, if, if you get an ache in your body and you begin to fear you're getting the flu, you'll eventually end up with the flu because spiritually speaking, fear opens you up to anything from the curse. It opens you up to anything from the curse. And the book of Proverbs says, we said this, uh, I believe it was Sunday or uh, Sunday evening, I believe, in church. Uh, that the curse causeless doesn't come. There's a reason that it shows up. And very often, more often than not, it is because of fear. Now, if we go on and we look at this, uh, I want you to see something here. Because we're not going to spend a lot of time looking at at what happened with Job, but you you know what happened to him. Uh, But it's interesting that towards the end of this, and Job finally got to the point where he changed his words, and blaming God for what had happened, and he went from from blaming God to speaking his trust in God. The Bible says at the end of his time that Job had received double what had been taken from him. All right? Today, right now, the day and age we live in, the devil is looking for people that are afraid. They can't make ends meet. He's looking for people who are afraid they're going to be sick. He's looking for people who are afraid their marriage is going to fail. Uh, And when fear shows up, hear me, faith leaves. When fear shows up, faith leaves because they don't peacefully coexist. Fear and faith do not coexist with each other because one or the other will be the dominating force in your life. You're either going to be afraid 
or you're going to be in faith. And someone will say, well, you know, Pastor Steele, what if I'm afraid and uh, I don't want to say it? My response is this, don't confess your fears because the devil can't get access to the things you don't confess. If I don't declare it, he cannot get access to it. Amen. The Bible says, David said in Psalm 118, 6, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do to me. And of course, David's also the one that wrote Psalm 91. And he said, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Psalm 91, 5 says, You'll not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the error that flies by day. So, you have to believe and you have to embrace those words because they are faith-filled words. And faith-filled words nourish the believer's spirit. It builds you up. It edifies you. It strengthens you. And as you build your faith on God's word, your faith will defeat fear. That's why you got to declare there is no fear here. Right? No fear in my home. No fear in my life. It's so important. Amen. Hallelujah. That there is no fear. Now, there's something that I wanted to uh, share with you before we close this devotional. And uh, concerning, obviously, this subject of fear. And we may get into it in the next one. But you have to understand that Fear is a uh, spiritual force, just like faith is a spiritual force. They both operate similarly. Uh, when I operate faith, the principles of operating faith are such as I'm calling things that be not as though they were. I'm calling the end from the beginning. Uh, I'm declaring out of my mouth, according to what Jesus said, I will have what I say. Now, fear, although a complete opposite force, functions the same way. All right? It only operates in your life to the extent that you declare it can operate. And so, just like when uh, a person is in faith and they are standing and believing God for, say, healing... And they're declaring, I'm the healed of the Lord. The stripes of Jesus were laid on his back for my healing. I have received, I have received my healing. I am the healed of the Lord. Well, they may not physically feel that in their body, but because the way that the principles of faith operate, those words will eventually bring to them what they are declaring and change what they see, what they feel, and the circumstance. It may take a period of time. It may take a, a however long, a few days, longer in some cases. But it will eventually change because faith is the substance of the thing hoped for. Faith is of the same value of the thing you're hoping for. Fear, on the other hand, a spiritual force, functions the same way. And, and this is important that you see this. And so when a person is saying, I don't feel well in my body, and they begin to declare, maybe it's X, and you put whatever name in there you want. Well, what is happening is that their words, fear is, is giving them a picture. All right? And when they declare those words, just like faith will bring to you the, what you're saying, fear will produce in your life what you're saying. And so, when I look at this, and I'm operating on this basis of no fear in my life, never going to be afraid another day in my life, I've got to understand that when fear is put into the atmosphere, it's bringing what I'm saying. All right? Because that, 
as I said earlier, God cannot produce in our life what we won't confess, what we won't declare. And so in, in whatever area, what we're dealing with as a nation, all right, in, in what they are calling the crisis, folks, it's going to end. It, it has to end. It cannot keep going. But then you're going to have to deal with things on a daily basis afterwards that still try to produce fear. And so I've got, I've got to believe beyond this. And so you've got to change what you're saying. As long as Job was saying what he was saying and blaming God and, and, and talking about how unworthy and unrighteous he was and, and all of these things, it kept the door open to the enemy. But the moment that Job said to the Lord, I have said things that I didn't know anything about, and he repented, and he did what God asked him to do, God was able to bring double. So think about this. There are so many things in the world today that are trying to make us afraid, that are trying to make us concerned about any number of things, not just the COVID virus, all right? What, what are we going to do here and what are we going to do there? You cannot keep opening your mouth and giving voice to fear and not expect the results of fear to come back. Amen. And, and, and here's the issue. It may not occur just like when you're standing in faith. It may not occur overnight, but those words will eventually draw to you what's in the Word of God. The same way with words of fear, they may not produce in you and in your life what you're saying immediately, but they will produce it. They will produce it. And so get a hold of, of what you're saying and consistently declare. If the challenge comes up, then you declare out of your mouth. There is no fear here. I will not fear. I refuse to fear. And if that's all you know to say, then start there. But then add the scripture to it. I'm not going to fear, and here's why. I'm not going to fear, and here's why. All right? Because that is the answer. Now, with each of these, I want to spend uh, just a moment at the end and talk to you about some good news concerning this. I received a report today uh, uh, about something the World Health Organization one of their officials, Dr. Uh, Maria Van Kerkhove, said, she said, there are now 20 coronavirus vaccines in development. And although there's still a number of logistical and financial hurt hurdles that will need to be overcome in the race to deliver a vaccine to the public, WHO representatives say they are working with scientists around the world to test and develop 20 different vaccines. And then she says, the acceleration of this process is really truly dramatic, dramatic in terms of what we're able to do. Building on work that started with SARS, that started with MERS, and is now being used for COVID, Dr. Maria Kirkhope, Van Kirkhove, the technical leader for uh, the World Health Organization's emergency program said this at a press conference in Geneva last week. She says the collective body of research is particularly remarkable since the vaccines are in development, listen, just 60 days after a number of international scientists decoded the virus's genetic sequence and shared it with the rest of the world and says that, uh, uh, one of the vaccines that's being tested on volunteers in Seattle has already illustrated the unprecedented speed with which the medical community is working to develop a vaccine. Now, the reason that's so important is this, is that things are happening quickly. And the Lord said to Brother Copeland, this disease called COVID-19 will be over much sooner than you think. And 2 Chronicles 20 and 20 says, Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. I want to leave you with that because very often in the secular media and the things that, that we watch, that people watch on the nightly news, uh, the report is always negative. 
And there's a reason. Negative reports draw viewers. But Scripture says, whose report will you believe? Well, we're giving you a report to believe today. And we believe that you're going to believe the report of the Lord. And victory is going to be the result. Life will get back to normal. We win in Jesus' name. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow.